In August 1844, five altars and a statue were discovered by men working stones out of a mound of earth about 200 yards west of Rochester Manor. This find was published by John Bell and Thomas Hodgson in Archaeologeraliana Series 1, Volume 4, for 1855. The statue was broken up for the purpose of covering a drain by the labourers employed and subsequently lost. Of the altars, four bore inscriptions. To the invincible god Mithras, Publius alias Titullus, Prefect, gladly, willingly and deservedly fulfilled his vow. To the invincible sun god, Tiberius, Claudius, Decimus, Cornelius, Antonius, the Prefect, restored this temple. To the god, Lucius Sentius Castus, centurion of the 6th legion, set this up as a gift. These three perfect altars, as they were called, were at first moved to Otterburn Castle. In 1931, they were moved to the Blackgate Museum in Newcastle, and then to the Museum of Antiquities at the University of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. One altar was broken upon discovery. To the sun god, Apollo, invincible Mithras, Aponius, Rogatianus. And one was a plain altar with a socketed base. These were formerly held in the Blackgate Museum and later transferred to the Museum of Antiquities. All altars are now held in the Great North Museum in Newcastle. The Mithraeum at Rochester was located and excavated over a period of 14 weeks from May to August 1953 by Gillam and McIver, who published their findings in Archaeologeraliana Series 4, Volume 32. Gillam identified two distinct phases of use in two successive Mithraea on the site. He concluded that the first Mithraeum was built in the late 2nd or early 3rd century AD, oriented east-west, and was constructed in stone with clay used to bond the blocks. The plan was of a rectangle with an apse to the west, which was 43 feet long by 22 feet wide. It was of a typical Mithraeum plan having a central nave flanked by low benches. A roughly built narthex was later added to the outside of the east wall so that there was no direct view from the front entrance into the temple. Similar to the shrine at Caraba, this anteroom contained a low stone bench, possibly for the use of the Korak's grade, the messenger of the temple, or for those uninitiated who were requesting admission to the Mithraeum. A centurial stone which may have come from the Vallum was reused and built in, upside down in the third course of the secondary wall, in the south jam of the east entrance into the nave. A second centurial stone was reused and built into the eighth course of the outer face of the north wall of the nave. The east wall was built over a badly filled in pit and an earlier unidentified stone structure apparently of Antonine date. Pit. Subsidence into the pit caused the collapse of this first incarnation of the building, near the end of the 3rd century. A second Mithraeum was rebuilt soon after, but without the anteroom, and access was now directly into the shrine from the outside. A stone podium was constructed in front of the apse, and the free space within the building was reduced by extending the benches. Perhaps the religion was growing amongst the soldiers. A new roof with wooden posts standing in front of the benches was built, much like the plan of the Mithraeum at Caraba, which we will visit later. Four small uninscribed altars were found inside the nave beside the benches, and the remains of a stone-cut water basin was recovered about two-thirds of the way along the northern bench. Gillam found the two heads of the torchbearers, Cautes and Cautipates, and speculated that this was the result of a deliberate decapitation of the statues. The lack of any trace of the Tauroctony scene remaining in the Mithraeum 
was also used to argue for a deliberate desecration. It was short-lived, and the pottery evidence from the area shows that it was out of use and desecrated by the mid-4th century. All the finds and altars were placed in the Museum of Antiquities at the University of Newcastle-upon-Tyne, and are now on display in the Great North Museum, formerly named Hancock's. <laughs>